Have you ever seen an email flash on your phone, but you were at either an appointment or you were driving and you just couldn't get to that email right away? Well, in this video, I'm going to teach you how to build an AI autoresponder that'll check the content of that email and respond accordingly. And I'm going to show you how to build it right now. All right. So there's four ways that a prospect or client will reach out to you, right? So the first is your phone. So a client may pick up the phone and call you to find out your availability. Um, if you look at one of my previous videos, I created an AI receptionist. So that way, if a client or prospect calls you, that you'll have an AI voice attendant answer the phone for you and they'll always be responded to on your the client or prospect that is. The second is uh, through a text message. So a lot of clients may want to text you to, to find your availability, especially for something that's last minute, but they need a, a quick response. So that's another way, right? Um, the third is online. So if you have like an online form, um, prospect or client may enter that information on the form and find out your availability that way. But today we're going to talk about the fourth option, which is email, right? So a client may email you to find out your availability. Um, and you kind of have to respond to that email right away or else, um, you can lose that opportunity, right? So we got to build this AI email autoresponder. So that way, as soon as an email comes in that the, the, the AI attendant will be able to read the email and respond to your client right away. Okay. So what you're looking at right now is, uh, the automation. I'm going to go over it from a bird's eye view, and then I'm going to teach you how to build it, um, step by step. Okay. So the first piece is, uh, a web hook. Um, so the web hook is basically clocking your email and finding out whenever, um, anything matches, uh, a filter that we, that you build on your um, email client, that it will come automatically and trigger this automation. Um, once it's triggered, then we have the, uh, we get to categorize the email after we categorize the email, uh, we are going to then, um, prep it. So we want to figure out, okay, what type of email it is. And we want to see if it makes sense to continue the automation or not. Okay. Once we continue the automation, then we're going to look at the senders. We're going to parse out and pull out the sender's name, the sender's email address and the intent of the sender. Okay. So what, what was the email about? Once we understand the intent of the email, then we can, um, then, um, send, send the email. So in this particular scenario, I have two, two separate cases. So, um, as notaries, uh, we receive, uh, orders that come in that want to find out our availability, or we may get, uh, an email stating that the, uh, the appointment got rescheduled or, or is being canceled at some point. So I just wanted to split the, um, the different scenarios to those two types of scenarios. Okay. So that's what I built here. So you don't have to worry. Um, if you don't want to build this all by yourself, um, I have a community, uh, where, uh, you can get this entire blueprint. All you have to do is click on this more button, uh, click on import, and then you'll have this entire automation built in. I'll include links, everything that I'm talking about today in the show notes. Okay. Um, but let's look at this. What, what did I use to make this? I used make. Uh, make.com is our automation tool that we use to build out all the workflows. Um, in a nutshell, you're able to, um, have multiple software, multiple products communicate with each other. Um, and make is the, um, platform that I use in order to do that. If you, if you ever use Zapier, Zapier is a similar product, but make is in my opinion, a lot better. Um, you can get started with Meek pretty much for free. All right. Um, it allows you to run a thousand operations per month for free. So that way you can build this automation um, for free. And once you start to build more automations, you may want to um, bump it up and go to a different, different plan. Okay. Okay. So, um, make, I use Meek, and the next thing that I use in my scenario, I used, um, open AI. Um, if we go back to this scenario, I used open AI to, um, um, parse out the emails, um, categorize the emails and kind of analyze the emails, um, to, in order to sign up for make, you just have to go to, um, um, open AI.com. And then you have to, uh, connect, sign up for an API. I believe it's like you pay $10 and then you just have to refill that account $5 a month or $5 based off of usage and then you just reload it for $5 and 
and then you can um continue to use it i think i've been i go i do a lot of um, ai automations and i don't pay more than 20 dollars a month so it's it's you paying pennies fractions of the pennies to use uh, open ai the third piece that i used is um anthropic anthropic claude um i find in my opinion anthropic is good when you're doing something personalized and um that's what i use in this scenario because we're sending out a personal email uh, i like anthropic for that and i like to use open ai whenever you're doing some type of um, analysis like you can see here i used um open ai to analyze the email and kind of parse everything out for me to kind of do the heavy lifting um and i use anthropic to respond to uh to respond to make a personalized response i, I find out it was, it's better that way for me in my opinion okay so for anthropic cloud um you basically once you log in you, you just have to go to a console that anthropic.com uh select get api key um, once you get the api key you just have to load um um load load some money on here um go to the billing plans put in your um card load some money and then is 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 a uh, based off of you should similar to open ai so it's the same concept okay okay so now let's build the automation so the first thing we need to do when we build the automation is we need to use a webhook so in the webhook that we're going to use in this particular case uh actually let this webhook let's delete this let's go in and let's see we actually actually going to use a mail hook so there's a webhook where you can get you can use a web address to trigger um basically to trigger the automation and then this the time we're going to use an email address to trigger our order our automation so we are going to use um mail hook okay so if we type in mail hook use a customized mail hook so um i'm just gonna pull my mail hook here and it's going to give me a custom e um, email address that we're going to use so what we need to do is we need to set up forwarding or whatever uh email platform that you use so if you use gmail you have to go into the settings and set up a forwarding and a filter so that way any message that you want to to um to analyze so say for example uh your your client you say let's say for example for argument's sake you have one client right and you have one client that comes from a specific email address so you have a one client from aol.com you want to set up a filter in your gmail or whatever mail client you have to AOL, to that one client that, at aol.com okay and i'm going to show you the filter that i use i use um, um outlook uh, 365 i use outlook 365 so um i'm going to show you my um my filter in one second let's pull it up one second all right so so yeah sorry let's pull it up so that way i can show you okay so let's go here let's edit this uh okay good so what i did is i set up a filter um to go to um to go to my um from my gmail account so in this particular place not aol but it's from my personal gmail account and i set up these uh i set up so that we the um the trigger looks for anything inside of the body of the message so i use scheduling schedule uh closing free available availability and yeah, the available in this case is case sensitive i said it twice so you want to think of any words that may be included in that message so for us as um, notaries we will uh, you know a title agent may reach out to you and say hey are you available at this time are you free at this time do you have availability at this time are you available for this closing so they, they use that language in order to do, to communicate with us to to find out our availability so i'll put that there and then four two you want to put that whatever um email address that you receive from this mail hook and make okay um and, and that's pretty much it so then we'll forward it here one thing that you have to be mindful of is you have to make sure that external forwarding is turned on with your mail with your mail carrier because when um when i was running doing my testing i was running into some issues and i realized that i didn't have external forwarding set up so you wouldn't want to see this google you know how to do x um external forwarding with whatever American mail carrier you are in you are with but if you are say your um your domain is hosted with GoDaddy 
um you could just um, go into godaddy actually if you if your mill is hosted if you use microsoft 365 uh what you need to do is first you'll just follow these steps um and i'll put a link to this in the show notes as well uh, but it's going to be different depending on your mail carrier but you just need to go into your your uh, godaddy dashboard and, and enable um forwarding okay and if this doesn't work then you can go into microsoft 365 defender and then you just want to make sure that um forwarding is enabled so that external forwarding is allowed okay because I was getting bounce backs and uh, I can figure out why, but then I realized that my external forwarding was turned off. Okay. All right, cool. So that's one thing you want to make sure that, um, you configure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this so that way we can run our test. Okay. So let me go here and let's copy this address. Okay. And I'm going to put it in here. Okay. Save. All right, well, so let's do that. We can close that. And uh, this mail, this, this, this uh, mail hook is gonna wait. It's gonna, anytime a message comes through, it's going to immediately run, which is a good thing. Cause that's what we want anyway, right? So when the email, when you receive an email, you want the automation to be triggered. Okay. All right, so um, we did that. So next thing we need to do is we need to categorize the email. So once the email comes in, uh, we want to, we want to determine what, what, uh, what, what the email is about. Right. So like I mentioned earlier, it, we, I'm expecting from my client or prospect two different types of, um, emails. So one is they need to schedule an appointment with me, um, or two, they need to, um, reschedule an appointment or cancel an appointment. So what we're going to use is we're going to use, um, open AI and we are going to use, uh, uh, GPT 4L. Okay. So let's pull it up. Um, and any, any, uh, module that you connect here, um, like open AI, um, like, um, if you have, do you go to use Gmail or if you go to use, um, and drop it cloud, the first time you open it up, it's going to want to connect to your account. Okay. So you're going to want to make sure that you connect your, uh, open AI account, uh, and get your API key because that's what it's going to want to actually for. It's going to actually for the API key. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to, um, choose the model. The model we're going to use is, um, GPT 4.0, which is the latest model. And the role is going to be the user role. And then the content, I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to copy off of the scenario that I just showed you earlier. So, <laughs> all right. So we're going to cheat a little bit and we are going to paste that in here. All right. So what I wrote is, uh, the email below should fall into one of these categories, analyze the email and output one of the following labels. All right. So I say one scheduling availability two scheduling change. Um, for example, if the sender states that they want to know if I'm available for a signing or closing, your output would be signing availability, John Doe email, John Doe email to emails to inquire, um, uh, to acquire <laughs> about your availability for closing on July 21st, 2024 at 3 PM in New York, New Jersey for order number AJ one, two, three, four. And then the email is going to be, um, let's see this text here. All right. So whatever text pull that back from the webhook, that's going to be the email, the max tokens. It's probably going to be, let's say 500 should be good. Okay. All right, good. So what we want to do next is we want to, uh, let's say, but I just rename this, let's say rename and we got to to categorize. Categorize email. Oops. So let's just uh, give it a quick emoji. And we can use this. All right. Hit OK. And let's save this. All right. And let's actually, let's label this. We are going to call this. We're going to call this the AI email 
What else am I there? Fucking types. All right. Cool. You know me, I gotta use my little emojis. Oops, nope. Come on. Oh boy. My mouse is not working today. Alright, I'm fixing up. Cool. And this is save. And what I want to do next is I want to actually send a test email. Okay, so I'm going to go to my Gmail and I'm going to categorize the email. This is a quick email. So it's going to be to me. Right, we're going to say, um, are you available? Uh, Sick closing. Are you available? I'll say, but I'm actually just have to say, hey, Bill. I'll say, Bill. <laughs> are you available? I'll oh, actually use Are you available for a signing? Or a signing on Friday at um, 10 a.m. Sorry. At 10 a.m. in Morristown. Is there anything? It's a purchase. And it requires. Funding authorization. Are you available for signing on Friday at 10 a.m. in Morristown, New Jersey? It's a purchase and requires funding authorization. Thanks. Uh, let's say hey. Let's say hey. And I'll hit send. Okay, good. So now let's go back to here. Uh, we'll close that. We'll go back here and let's just go to um, let's run this. OK, so if we hit run once, it should. Well, actually, maybe I should wait till the email. Oh, they, they did come in. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Closing request. Text. See, it came in that, but it came in quick. It came in before it even came in on my message. Closing request. Um, I said, hey, are you available for signing on Friday at 10 a.m.? So let's see that the, let's categorize the email. So it says, so categorize the email, scheduling availability, Aaron emails to inquire about your availability for a signing on Friday at 10 a.m. in Morristown, New Jersey. So categorize the email. Sweet. All right. So next, the next thing we want to do is we want to uh, kind of prep everything. We want to make sure that um, although we categorize the email, we would want to make sure that um, is in line to what we what we want. Okay, so we get to further investigate here. So we got to use. Um, uh, actually, we got to transform this. So let's do this. Give me a second. All right, we AI and we got to transform text to data structure because what we want to do is um, in this particular case we want to be able to route the um, we want to be able to send the appropriate message, right? So based off of the based off of what we received in the email, we want to be able to send the, the, the correct message. So we would kind of want to structure it a little bit. So uh, I'll show you what I mean in a second. So again, the model we're going to use is GPT 4.0. Then the text we're going to parse is we are going to parse the results from um, we are going to parse the results from the, uh, the the email the categorizing the email okay and the prompt here is go up here I just paste it from a little cheat um, from the transcript expect one of the results let me just close this in. from the transcript expect one of the results to be I'm oh, sorry from the transcript expect one of the results 
from below one scheduling availability to scheduling change so i wanted to to to, to give it a number give it a number one or, or a number two based off of whatever the uh the category is right and we are again again going to use um um categorized email all right and as far as the data structure um let's, let's go to data structure what we're going to do is the parameter is going to be category let me just say number category number okay and um as far as the description we want to say output output what number was used um from the choices and the data type is a number and examples we can use examples um example is going to be one and the second example will be two right because there's two uh there's two choices that's right so if you have more than one you know whatever choice how many choices you have you just give it the example one two three because you just want i just wanted to output one two or three and i know that what, what i i personally know what's it's going to be because we uh, put it here <laughs> all right all right so um we are, we are going to call this uh router prep a route prep all right and this is this route prep and then we, what we want to do is we're going to go to the C tool cool um let's save this and always remember to save as you go don't ask me why because I'll, i've messed up in the past <laughs> all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cheat instead of running the entire scenario i'm going to copy um the results here and i'm going to paste it here just so we can run this um particular uh module so if you right click on the module and you say run this module only it's going to prompt you for the results so it's looking for the results from the category categorized email so we just we'll just paste the last one here hit okay and let's see what number it gives it right so if we click on the magnifying glass here it says the category is number the category is one and it should be right because what we're doing in this particular case is we're scheduling an email okay oh, oh, let's schedule email we're scheduling we try to find out this the email is the email that we receive is trying to determine what our scheduling availability is so that's number one okay if, if that email was regarding a reschedule or cancel it should come up as a scheduling change okay so that's what you want number one cool all right so the next step is now that we know now that we know um now that we know what type of email it is we need to um pull out some information from the email so the first thing we need to do is we need to uh uh pull out we need to pull out the uh we need to parse some information from the the transcript okay so we are going to use um again model gpt40 uh the message is i'm sorry the role is a user the message this is uh copy from There you go. Okay, and then I'll just move over it together. Cool. All right. So um, it says read read the forwarded email transcript and extract the sender's name. If no name is provided, just produce a valued client. The sender's the sender's name will be shown between the from and uh and the email in the transcript so the email i, I did it with the um the, the the brackets um example um the sender's name as i uh, give the example like an example below from then you have the sender's name in the middle and then you have the email at the end i said oh i'll, um, I'll put the sender's name only let's close this and the email transcript we want is from uh let's collapse everything what we need is we need the text from here right because that's the transcript this entire uh email that it pulled from the mail hook okay the maximum token we need on this one is 200 should be enough okay and if we want um 
let's see i'm not sure if we'll be able to pull it but that's okay all right let's just we'll run this in we'll set we have to set another email again to run the scenario and we'll do that in one second but for now we are going to just pull sender's name so let's just <clears throat> rename the module senders name all right give it a cool emoji because the sender is cool so we have to give them a cool shade cool cool uh make sure we hit save awesome let's just do one more and then we'll do a test okay next thing we need to do next is again we could actually just let me show you this we could just actually clone this we'll clone go here all right and then we get to just rename this the sender's email that's what we need next we need to parse out that email and what would you be using this case again is email awesome all right and Second, we just copy my prompt. Awesome. All right, so the only thing we need to do is we need to change the message content here. So let's delete this. And fix that there. Awesome. So what I said in this one is a uh, read the forwarded email transcript and extract the sender's email address. The sender's email will be shown between the angle brackets in the transcript. Example, from sender's name, right? And then uh, the sender's, the sender, sender at mail.com and I'll put, make sure you output the email address only. And again, we wanna pull the, um, the text from the mail hook, okay? Awesome. All right, so, Let's make sure we hit OK. Make sure we hit save. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to send, I'm going to actually forward the same email that we had before. Um, let me just pull it up on my side. Give me one second. All right, let's see. All right, there it is. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to forward this. Okay. To save on time and send that to me. Good, perfect, boom. All right, so I sent it. So um, this the, the scheduling is off right now. So I'm gonna wait till the email comes through. As soon as it comes through, I'm going to, um, as soon as the email comes through, I'm gonna run it manually, okay? It should come in in a few seconds. Yep, just came through. So let me hit run once and then we should see, oh, yep, use existing data because it's already there. All right, perfect. All right, so again, we looked at this before, categorize the email, right? Um, next is going to give it a number, number one. Next is gonna pull the name, uh, the name results, Aaron Johnson, which is me. And the next is to pull my email address or the email address sent from. Good, that's my personal email. Good, so it's working perfectly so far. We are off to a good start. Uh, <clears throat> next thing we want to do is this: um, we want to get the um, the intent. We want to get the tone of what the sender was trying to portray in that email. So we get again. Let's just see this. So I can. Time it is. This we gotta duplicate this again. We gotta call the module. Oops, did I do it? Uh, clone, I mean, if we copy. All right, and again, we just rename this. We gotta rename this to seller's intent. And let's see, emoji. Um, let's see which one I wanna use. Hmm. Ah, this was a good one. What was the seller's intent, okay? All right, so let's open this up and let's delete this and paste our new, oops, nope, this wrong. <laughs> What's that about? All right, copy this, pull some code instead. 
paste that. There we go. That's better. Perfect. All right. So I said based on the fort. Oops. Sorry. I got all this thing going on. Based on the forwarded email below, provide a summary of the sender's problem slash issues slash desires. If no objection are provided, simply state no key objections. Also include one sentence on the sentiment and tone of their sender. So again, we are going to um, use our mail hook and we want to get the text from the mail hook. That's the actual email address. Okay. All right. Let's hit okay. And um, let's see. Um, we'll we'll um, we'll continue and then we'll run we'll run the scenario again. Just to say one time. Okay. So now that we have all of this information, what we have to do next is we want to, um, we're going to have two different types of emails. Uh, so we want to be able to, um, send the correct response depending on what email came through. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to um, set up what's called a router. And what this router is going to do is going to be able to split our, we able to be able to have more control over what meshes this goes where. Okay. Um, let's see router. All right, cool. So the first thing we need to do is we are going to use um, Anthropic. So our, fir our first route is going to be um, if we have a scheduling request. Okay, so let's use let's introduce Anthropic Claude. All right, um, let's create a prompt. So recently Anthropic came up with a new model 3.5 Sonnet. Um, which is comparable to GPT 4.0, and it's, it's really great. Um, I, I've played around with it a lot with the, the user interface, um, the UI. Um, um, but now they just recently brought it into the API, which is pretty good. Um, so you can create like games and, and when you run, when you in the, in the user interface and you can actually see the code and you can see it, you can see it kind of work in real time and you can make different changes and it's pretty robust. It's pretty cool. So, um, you can't see it obviously with the API, um, which, which is what we're using right now. But if you go into, um, you know, a claw that AI and, um, you select the three, the 3.5, um, sign it as your model and you start saying, you know, create me a video game, do this to that. And then it'll start generating that for you. And you can see it, um, in real time, which is pretty cool. Okay. All right. So, um, max tokens thousand um and the message the role you're going to say is user and the content now the type is a text and the text we're going to use is this put it in here all right all right let me show this here real quick all right all right so this is pretty it's a lot so i'll do, go through it really quickly so it said uh, i wrote that your role is that of an expert email composer. I need you to respond to an email on behalf of Aaron Johnson, your Aaron Johnson's administrative assistant. So, um, being that I'm not actually responding to the email, I want to make sure that the person that's responding in this case, AI is going to say that I'm AI, I'm Aaron's personal assistant. Um, you will, you will respond to an email from one of our clients regarding a scheduling request. And I gave it a little bit about my company. Um, then I said the required information, um, you're going to be required to get the signing location, the signing date, the time, the signer's name, uh, the signer's phone number and the order number. Those are the six things that I need in order to process an order. Um, I do orders locally and I do orders nationally. So I need to have the complete, all the information in order for me to be able to route it appropriately. Okay. Um, and also last one, this is actually seven pieces. So I do need a signing type, right? Cause a lot of times we're going to clients say, I need you, I need, I need you for closing. I need to know if it's, is it a refi? Is it a purchase? Is it a, if it's a purchase, is it a buyer side? Is it the seller side? Is it, um, is it, this a general notarization? Is it a wrong remote, remote online notarization? So I need to know exactly what type of, um, signing it is in order for me to, um, process it correctly on the back end. Okay. And then I gave it an example. I said the signing location, one, two, three Main Street, Brooklyn, New York, the signing date, um, September 7, 2024, the time, the name, Eric Adams, um, the signer's phone number, the order number, and the type of signing, which is a refinance. Okay. 
And then I said also the subject line, because whenever you produce an email with um, OpenAI, they usually produce a subject line and they also produce the body of the message. So I wanted to, wanted it to open the air to format um, the subject line a certain way. All right. So I said the subject line format should be the signer's name um, dash uh, of the order number, um, the signing type, signing type on this date at this time. So I kind of wanted it to be that way. And I gave it an, um, an example. So Eric Adams, AB12798 is a refinance on September uh, 7, 2027. I said 2027, it doesn't matter, at um, 2 p.m. Okay. So then um, I gave, I'm going to give it some information to use. So I said, compose the email using information, using the information below. So the results um, from the sender's name. So let's just clap all and we need to get the senders. Let's just put the over this right here. So then we can fill it in. All right. So the sender's name, let's move this over a little bit for you. All right. So the sender's name. All right. So put this a little off. So sender's name, go here. Uh, this is going to be the results here. Number five, sender's name, uh, sender's email address. So we close this again. Sender's email address is going to be here. Okay the sender's intent. Okay. The sender's intent right here is going to be the result of that. And then the full email transcript is what we pulled from the web, the mail hook. You're saying web hook, but the mail hook, the text from the mail hook. Okay. All right. So let's close this. So I said, all right, after you analyze, after your analysis, if any of the required information is missing, please be sure to mention that in your response. So like, if any of this required information is missing, I need to get that information from the sender. Okay. Um, I said your response needs to be friendly, empathetic, curious, I'm oh, sorry, crit courteous and with a tone of urgency. Let me read that again. Your response needs to be friendly, empathetic, courteous, and with a tone of urgency at the beginning of the email mention that your errands um, executive assistant and that you're confirming receipt of the sign-in request. Also mention um, that orders can be placed online for expedited notary assignment using our notary scheduling platform. So I, I am assigning service. We use um, Snapdocs. So I gave it, I gave it a link to our Snapdocs link. So that way, instead of them, instead of a signer, uh, instead of my client emailing me that information, they could just go into the portal and fill in that information. And I sent them a link to that. I said, output the subject line and an HTML version. Oh, I, I said an HTML email in JSON format. All right. So I'm going to explain this a little bit. All right. So being that I usually don't use a JSON format, but in this particular case, to save a step. Um, I, I told, um, um, I want the automation to, 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 to uh, not the automation, but Anthropic Claude to output the, the information that I need in a JSON format. So the two pieces of information I'm going to get is I'm going to get the subject line and I'm going to get the email, but I need to be able to reference those two things. Um, so I'll put it, I'm putting it in sort of a, a JSON format. It's almost like, it's almost like a database, if you will. Um, and I'll be able to reference the subject line. And I'll be able to also reference the email address because I need that in order to pose the email, um, using, um, using, um, Outlook. Okay. All right. And that's, and that's another reason why I, I mentioned to use HTML format, because if you don't do it in an HTML format, uh, it's going to be one text that's going to be in a, like a one big paragraph and then that's not formatted correctly. So HTML is going to be formatted correctly. And I believe Gmail does the same way. You need to be HTML um, formatted. Most email, um, platforms, except HTML, um, HTML, um, uh, code into the, the body of the email. So that way it kind of structure it structures it correctly. Okay. All right. So that's that. Um, let's hit save. So we don't lose that. And then what I want to do is I want to actually just rename this so we can reference it draft email. Um, and we are going to give it another emoji and let's see here. Boom. Oh, cool. All right. Uh, we'll test this in a second, but what I want to show you is the JSON. 
So this is JSON. And that's JSON. All right. And then what we want to do is we want to parse it. All right. And the string we're going to, going to take is we're going to take the text response from here. Hit OK. Um, see, if I run this module only, it's going to want the text response. OK. So let me just save this here. So it's going to give me some errors, but I want to still run it anyway because um, make doesn't don't like you to put any type of um, like um, like any type of um, functions or any type of like coding at, at the end of a module because um, this is just doing calculations. It's not actually doing producing anything, um, but I'm going to still I was to save anyway and I'm going to I have to I have to forward another email address. Okay, so give me one second. So let me just forward another email and so we can do a test. So being that being that uh, this automation runs in real time, whenever it processes an email, it doesn't go back and then process an old email. So we have to continue to send multiple emails here. So let's see. All right. So I'm going to try it again Hit send. Um, and we go from there. All right. Um, let's see. And actually, let's do this. Let's rename this. Uh, oops, sorry. It's name and we are going to say extract. Extract email. And let's use. Oops. That it's cool. Boom. All right. Um, we'll hit save and save anyway. And I said run once. Okay. That's okay. Run anyway. Use existing data. All right. It's going to pull everything. All right. So what we didn't see last time was the sender's intent. All right. So let's look at this here. Um, summary. Aaron is requesting availability for signing on Friday at 10 AM in Morristown, New Jersey. The signing is for purchase and requires funding authorization. No key objective, no key objections. Um, sentiment and tone of the sender the tone is straightforward and professional. Okay. No, well, I'm straightforward and professional. <laughs> All right. So let's see the, the, the draft of the email. Okay. Um, okay. So it's in JSON form. It's in a, uh, HTML format. So it's a little tough to see, but we can try to see if we can take a look at it here. Okay. It says their valued client. Um, I hope this email finds you well. I'm Aaron's executive assistant, and I'm writing to confirm receipt of your signing request for Friday at 10 a.m. in Morristown, New Jersey. We appreciate your business, and we are exci excited, excited to assist you with this purchase signing that requires funding authorization. To ensure uh, we can promptly schedule a notary for your signing. We need some additional information. Could you please provide the following details? And it says exact signing location, the address, sign its full name, the sign its phone numbers, um, your your order number. Once we have this information, we'll be able to guarantee a notary assignment within five minutes as per our service promise. If we don't meet that this time frame, your service will be complimentary. Um, for future reference and expedited notary assignments, you can place orders directly through our online notary scheduling platform at any of the, the email address. We, we're uh, committed to providing you with exceptional service and look forward to assisting you with this signing. Please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions or need further assistance. Best regard. It says, I said, I got an assistant to Aaron Johnson. So that's pretty great. So this will happen automatically. Like somebody sends you an email and this is going to go out to them, right? And in the subject line, it, it did the subject line. It says sign and request Morristown, New Jersey, purchase on Friday at 10 a.m. So it didn't put any order numbers because it didn't actually have the order. So it put what it, put what it had and it requested the additional information from the signer, which is exactly what I wanted to do. Because a lot of times we receive partial information from our clients and we have to always go back to them and ask for additional information. So this is going to do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. So that way you have all of what you need. Okay, so let's look at the, the what was parsed from the JSON, right? So if we look, click on click on this, we'll see that it, it broke it broke it up, right? So it broke up the subject, which was here, and then it broke up the email body, which was here. Awesome. So next thing we need to do next, what we need to do next is we need to send the email. But in this particular case, just to be safe, I'm gonna compose the email, get everything ready, but I'm gonna put it save it as a draft. Okay, so if we go to 
um, Office 365 and let's create a draft message. Okay. We can send this out right away, um, which would be cool, but in our particular case, we're not going to do that. So the subject is going to be the subject we pulled from the, um, the, the JSON. That's why we did this in the first place. Um, the next is going to be the body content, which is the email body. All right. And what we're going to do is to the recipient is going to be, um, let's just collapse everything. The recipient is going to be the sender's email address, right? And the name is going to be the sender's name, all right? Boom. And that's all we need. I'm going to run this. I'm going to do this one more time. Um, then we got to run the test. Okay. All right. Let's send for another email here. Uh, cool set. All right. All right. So I did it and, um, it should be good. Let me just run it once. We should be, we should actually, let me save this first. All right. And then we gotta run this once. There it is, came through. Boom, boom. Posing the, posing the email. Boom. All right. So here it is right here. Okay. So it's the body preview. The body um, content. The full email address. So I'm going to pull the email address. Once it, once the email comes through, I'm going to um, show it to you. All right. But in the meantime, while that's working, it's magic. We are, remember we have two different scenarios. So the first scenario is, uh, the first scenario is, um, if the sender is emailing us to, um, if the sender is emailing us, if the sender is, if the sender is emailing us to, uh, schedule an appointment, the next one is going to be is if they want to reach that appointment, right? So let me just, what I want to do is I want to set up a filter here, right? Because we're going to, we're going to add a different, we're going to add the second, um, route in a second. But what we're going to do is we're going to set up a filter and the filter is a uh, scheduling appointment. That's what, that's our label, right? So the condition is going to be, um, let's see here. The condition is going to be, um, if the category number, right? So if this category number is one, if the category number is equal to one, then it's going to route it that way. That, that means we're scheduling an appointment. Okay. Um, let's see here. Let's copy this and let's duplicate that. Right. And let's paste it here and push this here. And we can just delete that. Let's get everything cleaned up. All right. And then the second scenario, all right, is going to be is two. So the second scenario, and if we go back to the, um, the router prep, and that's why I called it router prep, right? Because we are prepping for this router right here. Um, <clears throat> scenario two is, is going to be if someone is, is referring to any, if the sender is emailing us about any scheduling changes, it's going to route that way. Okay. All right. Let me see if that email came through yet. Okay. Where did it go? Make sure it went the right way. Okay, should be in my. Oh, it didn't come. Durr, it didn't come through because it's in my draft folder. I'm, I'm trying to look at my phone to see if the email came through, but it didn't. All right, let me check my draft folder. Just give me a second. All right, uh, here it is. I'm gonna pull it up, and I'm gonna pull it to the screen here. Pull them. See, see how it's formatted correctly. Awesome. So it says. Uh, dear value client, I hope this email finds you well. I'm Aaron Johnson, he's a good assistant, blah, 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 blah. And it keeps going and he gives us a link. We already read this email. I just wanted to show it to you that it came through and it saved as a draft. So I can come in here, I can look at it and I can hit send and then we're good to go. Okay, so we'll go directly to the client and that's good. All right, um, so let's close that for now. Just wanted to show that to you. So you can see that it was properly formatted. All right, so next is, let's go into 
here. So now we just have to change our prompts. And so we just have to change our prompts here. So that way it will, it will reflect, um, it'll reflect that somebody is, um, dang it. Oh, one thing I need to do is I need to also this filter here. Sorry. Computer is acting a fool today. Let's say reschedule appointment, reschedule appointment. Schedule a signing, right? Do it like that way. All right, so let's cut this and then we will. Go here and copy and paste the correct prompt for the rescheduling prompt. Come on. All right. So let's close this and let me go here. All right. So sweetie, um, your role is that of an expert email composer. I need, I need you to respond to an email on behalf of Aaron Johnson, your Aaron executive assistant. You respond to an email from one of our clients regarding rescheduling or canceling assignment. And I gave it the background and I gave it the same examples that it would need. And instead of saying required, it says information needed. I didn't put that it was required. Um, but I want the AI to re-verify some information. So if they're rescheduling the appointment, right, I want them to re-verify, Hey, is this the same site and location? Um, what, what time is it? What, you know, date, I just want to confirm a few things just so that we have the information correct. Okay. Um, um, and I put the required information just like I did in the last scenario, the subject line, the same thing. One thing I have to change here is these, right? Where everything is pointing to. So again, let's just collapse everything. Um, let's go to sender's name, which is here. Sender's name, uh, sender's email over here and the results sender's email, the intent, uh, oops, let's just collapse everything. Let's make it a little leader, leader. Sorry. <laughs> um, sender's intent is right here. Uh, and the full email transcript is going to be with the mail hook. Uh, there's a text here. Okay, good. And uh, let's just close this. <clears throat> I'm going to state it. Um, after, you after your analysis, if um, any of the required information is missing, please be sure to mention that in your response. Your response needs to be friendly, empathetic. Uh, so we read that before. And that says only output the subject line and, H and, and HTML email in JSON format. So it's the same thing. Um, oh, oh, what I did, I did skip this at the beginning of the email mentioned that you're um, Aaron's executive assistant and that you're confirming receipt that the order needs to be rescheduled or rescheduled or canceled. Okay, cool. Everything else should remain the same. Um, we still gotta, um, parse this text and we're pulling this information from the body. Everything is good. And now let's hit save. And what I want to do next is I want to send a different email. All right. So, um, I created a different email. This one is in regard to canceling the closing. Okay. So I put, uh, you know, sorry, but the lender is canceling the signing for Friday at 10 AM in Morristown. Okay. Well, um, what I realized I didn't do is in the filter, I didn't put anything in regard to any language in here in regards to, in regards to, um, canceling. So we need to put cancel in here. Cancel. Okay. Canceling. Um, okay. What I'm, I want to, we want to put that language in here as well. So if, um, we also need to put like, uh, well, I have schedule in here It'll include schedule. Um, so that's good. So now that, that, that'll work now. So we're going to save that. Let's close this and let's try to forward that email again. Hit forward. And I'm going to send that email to myself one more time. Okay. Cause it wasn't triggering. And I wondered why, cause I didn't have the, the language in here, the, the correct language in there. And so we did that. We corrected that this time. It should work. All right. So let's, um, yep. Send it. All right. So I just said that. Okay. 
So it actually should run by itself now because I have it to arrive immediately and it should run. So let's just see what's going to happen. There it is. So it's running. It's coming through. It should actually route down, which is great. So we could take a look at it. Let's take a look at it as it goes, right? So we looked at it scheduling change. So that's the second one. Aaron uh, Johnson emails emails to notify about the cancellation of a closing on Friday at 10 a.m. in Morristown, New Jersey. And that's the order number, right? X Y 5411. A route of prep again is going to choose two, right? Because it's a scheduling change. Okay. So the actually this should say category number is two. Perfect. Sender's name. Me, Aaron Johnson, email address, personal email address, Gmail account, the uh, sender's intent, uh, summary of the summary of the sender's problems, issues, the sender, the sender, Aaron Johnson is informing the recipient that the lender is canceling signing scheduling for Friday at 10 a.m. in Morristown, New Jersey. He's no key object, no key objection. The sentiment and tone of the sender, uh, the tone is concise and matter of fact with a hint of um uh re resignation okay um the route is which should have went down now because we are not scheduling appointment we're actually rescheduling or signing or or canceling in this case right um let's see the draft email um the draft email is um uh x y 5411 cancellation morristown new jersey signing on 7 21 24 and I said Friday and it, it automatically put Friday's date, which is awesome. Okay. So it assumed there was 7, 21, 2024, 10 AM. Okay. And it says their value client. Hope this email finds you well. I'm Aaron's executive assistant. Um, and I'm writing to confirm that we have received your request to cancel the signing schedule for Friday, July 21st, 2024, 10 AM in Morristown, New Jersey. Um, we understand that plans can change and we appreciate you informing us promptly about the cancellation. We have taken immediate action to remove this appointment from our schedule for our records and to ensure accuracy. Could you please provide us with the following information regarding the cancel signing, the signer's name number, how many side phone number, um, and it says having this information will help us maintain precise records and um, assist us in serving you better in the future. If there's any possibility that you may that you might need to reschedule the signing, please don't hesitate to let us know. As always, 24 7 closes guarantees that we can schedule an order within five minutes for your request. Thank you for your understanding and cooperation. If you have any questions or need further assistance, please don't hesitate to reach out. Best regard, executive assistant to Aaron Johnson. Awesome. So, this is happening automatically, right? Um, and the email went out. So, let's see if we can go to uh, my draft folders and if we can find the actual email. Here we go it up boom here it is right here so this is awesome right so again all this is automated for you so um this is happening while you're driving while you're at a closing um this ai is automatically responding to your clients um letting them know that we are handling we are taking care of the situation we have it in our radar and we'll um, respond accordingly and i think that's all the client will really wants to hear they want to know that they that that they are being heard. They want to know that you are um, taking care of the situation, that you actually care about the email that they sent. Um, because they always say that, you know, a lot of times we wait to respond to prospects, but we shouldn't wait. We shouldn't. We should respond with something. Just let them know that we received the email and that we have it on our radar. Um, this is going to just elevate your level of customer service and it's going to allow your clients to appreciate you a lot more. Okay. So I hope this automation helped you. Um, again, this is just, um, a scenario. What's what scenario that we can use it for? I mean, but you can use your imagination as a different, um, scenario that you can use this for. You can respond to, um, RFPs of anybody, when these are a proposal, you could put any filter that you want, and then you can use this baseline automation to automatically respond and with the technology now they can, we can read attachments we can read um images anything that we receive as an attachment on an email it can be analyzed and then you can um, then respond accordingly so hopefully this helps until next time peace thank you so much for watching 
Access to you and your time is greatly appreciated and we don't take that for granted. Hope that we provided some value for you in this video. Be sure to check out the description notes below for any important links. Now, one favor to ask you, make sure to subscribe, like, and share, leave comments, all the YouTube stuff. All right, until next time, have a blessed one.